This is not the most expensive controller in the Fly Digi lineup, but it is the best. It's fast on PC, smooth on Switch, does everything I want it to do, nothing that I don't. And while it's a round backside isn't my favorite thing in the world, for $90, there is no denying that this is a fantastic controller for Switch, PC, and guess what? With an adapter or dongle, you can run it on Xbox or PlayStation as well. This is going to be the most comprehensive, in-depth review of this controller on YouTube. The video is timestamped into chapters, each component of the controller. That's in the description as well as the timeline, so feel free to jump around, but I recommend that you don't because this video is going to be chock full of information about this plastic princess. Let's get it. This is your controller captain. We've reached 6,900 feet. Go ahead and start flicking the sticks and molly in the back paddles. Mm, you don't like back paddles? How about those rear buttons? We've tested almost 100 custom and premium controllers and we're only at the beginning. You need a thumbstick guide or a tutorial on how to overclock your controller? Check out the controller playlist. Bing bong. Controller captain out. As for the packaging, included accessories on the Fly Digi Vader 3 Pro, the professional version, the $90 edition, not the $76, I'm not quite a professional, Vader 3 edition. They are identical, not only in packaging, but also with what you're going to get in the box. Also, you might be wondering what the second box is. Congratulations, asshole. You can count. <laughs> this is going to be the charging dock, which is compatible for not only this controller, but also the Fly Digi Apex 3, which I just reviewed. So this will also be getting unboxed as it's getting its day in court as well. This little gesture on the side. <laughs> out of my face. If you want to pause the box to read some of the key features, you may do so now. As you can see, you have three modes of connectivity. That's fantastic. Bluetooth, wireless USB dongle, and wired via that USB-C cable. Why I'm talking like a goddamn robot? I don't, I don't know. Flip around front side. <laughs> We have a QR code for the Fly Digi Game Center application. My editor will go down this rabbit hole and tell you where it goes. Hell, it goes straight directly to the depths and <laughs> hot gates of hell. And then, of course, they have WeChat as well, as this is a Chinese controller, and that's a popular Chinese platform. I won't be installing it on my phone. Your $90 controller is going to be set in this cardboard, peeking out, telling you, hey, play with me. You're going to have a USB-C cable inside of this little baggie. You're also going to have a thank you letter with a stamp and sigil of the CEO directly from Castelli Rock. Your controller is also going to be held in this baggie to keep it free of dust and debris in its transportation. If your rubber band supply is running low, you're now one more with this here. And the cable is quite pitiful at under six feet. It is USB-C. It is not 3.0, despite having the blue plastics in there. As you can see, it's missing some pins for 3.0 to be possible. Hello, can you show the good people what I'm talking about? This is just rubber, not microfiber or braided. You're not going to have any Velcro tie back and stay connected. You ain't going to have no dust covers on the A or C end. If you're blinder than a bread basket, you might miss that there is some documentation under here. Your dongle was actually in that little baggie. I wonder how many customers have accidentally thrown out this dongle because it's kind of sort of in conspicuously packaged in the bottom there. I looked through the entire box, head to toe, tip to tits, just because I've accidentally thrown out cables and connectors and shit in the past. Uh, no, sir, not anymore. Not for me. This is identical to the dongles from their other models, which I am not a huge fan of. You have this flat matte plastic sandwiching this gloss in the middle, and it feels incredibly cheap and chintzy. Chintzy is a word that I don't know if it exists or not, but it really does describe the build quality of this product. Chintzy. If you live in North America or an English speaking region, you might be slightly confused when you look at this instruction manual, pamphlet, or brochure because it looks like Egyptian hieroglyphics. These are Chinese characters, in fact. And you're also going to have a little plug for some of their other products because they make a shitload of other things. A smorgasbord, if you will. They make things like earbuds, mobile phone cases. Are you absolutely screwed? Absolutely not. You have this QR code, this one on the right, which will take you to a PDF document that you can download and it will be in English. And then the Fly Digi controller charging dock, which is currently $20 on Amazon, which I do find to be a somewhat reasonable price, especially for the appearance and build quality of this product. But it does have very limited compatibility as it's only meant to work with a handful of Fly Digi only only controllers, so it's not like you can use this dock with all other brands of controllers or anything, which there are other charging docks or cradles that allow you to do that. For example, the 8-bit Doe one that I reviewed on the channel a fortnight ago. That reference has nothing to do with the game Fortnite. Your dock's gonna be held in this plastic. There is nothing underneath it hiding like documentation. You are gonna have this little plastic guard for it, as well as a peely sticker on the front. Keep it free of, d oh my lord, yeah, that is gloss, piano black. That is gonna collect fingerprints and maybe even micro scratches down the road. Not the prettiest thing in the world. I'm trying to go one-handed, freehand if you will, like Leonardo da Vinci. This thing is pretty chunky. A little Fly Digi branding on the side here, very minimalistic. You have your USB A and C ports in the back. Rubberized feet on the bottom so it won't slip around your desk. Pretty big old seam right here where the two pieces meet. Not the prettiest, but whatever. Already getting a ton of smudges with that gloss. Kind of wish they just went with an all matte or flat appearance, but that's just my personal preference. As for compatibility with the charger dock, it is limited even within the Fly Digi model lineup. For example, this is the Vader. Oh, my ring light just died over here. That's okay. We didn't need your service.
Chris anyway. This is the Vader 2 that I reviewed on the channel so, so long ago. And as you can see, it doesn't have those two metal contacts on the bottom. However, both of these models do. The controller we're reviewing here today, the Vader 3 Pro, which I'm gonna get it right out of the way, is a real beast of a controller, especially at its price point. And then the Apex 3, this one I'm a little bit less satisfied with. I just reviewed recently. And I think the build cost could have been reallocated away from the screen and away from the adaptive triggers, maybe even these rubber grips, towards things like lowering the input lag or delay on PC and having better swappable thumbstick caps. But anyway, this does work with the charger dock. That is so weird. That was throwing me for an absolute loop. So I get a visual confirmation that this is indeed charging by this red LED light whenever I dock it. And also this RGB section turned on, which hopefully that'll turn off eventually. But over here on the Apex 3, okay, there we go. Making me look like an idiot. This was not illuminating earlier, so maybe I just wasn't seating it correctly. There we go. Now we're in it to win it. Cooking with that peanut oil, cooking with that grease. Rad. So it definitely works with these two controllers. Really important note, if you own multiple Fly Digi controllers, the dongles are not identical. So if you've got these loosely just sitting around, which you probably will, because only one of the five controllers I have reviewed from Fly Digi had an included carrying case for the included accessories. So they're not loose and whatnot, but only the Vader 3 Pro that we're reviewing here today has the words FlySync printed on here, and I'm pretty sure you will get faster speeds out of this dongle versus the previous ones that do not have that marking on there, but we of course are going to test the input lag or delay shortly. The one with the text printed on it actually belongs to the Apex 3 flagship most expensive version I tested recently, and the one with no print on it belongs to the Vader 3 Pro, but actually gets better speeds quite a bit quicker than that flagship version. Out of all the FlyDigi controllers I've tested, the most expensive one is actually the slowest on PC. Honestly, that controller is very disappointing in comparison to the one I'm reviewing today and previous Fly Digi models from the last few years. This is a terrible habit I need to get out of. I have a new camera right over here, so I should be looking right into your urethra tip, but I keep staring into the pleasure hole of this camera over here, which is this one. I can switch between them soup on the fly, but Jesus. As for cosmetics or appearance, can we take just a second to appreciate how sexy this looks with those thumbstick caps on there, these Modern Warfare limited edition joints, which really grew on me. At first, I was like, oh, these are kind of uncomfortable, especially on the edges, but my God, after using these for the last couple days, pretty much the entire time I've been using this controller, these are pretty sick. And I think they look really cool on this controller, but this is what the controller looks like in its stock configuration. And I have to say it looks pretty damn good. Despite the fact the plastics not only feel, but also look from a distance kind of cheap. You can see the pattern on this camera. Like it's kind of porous and whatnot. Get a little closer, but I really do like this two-tone design with that dark slate gray or charcoal, if you will. And then this lighter silver up here. Although I will say this silver section looks pretty cheap painted this metallic flake here and on the d-pad and i think it might have looked better with just the entire controller grayed out but overall with those blue anti-friction rings this just looks a really good controller in my opinion eight out of ten 8 out of 10. As for price, platform, and where to buy, you can get the standard I'm not a professional version for $76, which I have reviewed on the channel previously. And if you're a fan of One Piece, because how the hell could you not be, there is a limited edition version, which is currently unavailable. Then you've got the pro version going for $90, which is in and out of stock. I was lucky enough to lock one in on Amazon, but uh, like I said, they're out of stock more often than they are in stock. And this is where I'd recommend picking it up, despite the fact if you come over here to AliExpress, this controller is $48 currently, plus you got a little $3 store coupon in there, probably jump in on a little sketchy group buy, get it down to about $12. It'll get to your doorstep in about three months with no customer support whatsoever. And God forbid you need to activate a return. In all seriousness, it is quoting estimated delivery October 17th. And it's currently September 26th, so that's not bad at all. Shipping only being $4.84, but I would still recommend going through Amazon as it is a reputable vendor and you have this little free return placard over here. Now, as far as platforms, the answer that the controller gods would like me to give you is that it's for Nintendo Switch, PC, Android, and iOS. However, with the wide world of adapters breaking down platforms, platform limitations and whatnot. I've been using this on my PlayStation 5 as well as my Xbox Series X recently. A quick caveat to that, my guy, if you're using the adapters that I mentioned and have in the description below, you're going to be limited to PS4 games on your PlayStation 5 as you're still going to get that error message popping up saying, hey brother, grab a DualSense controller. However, if you want to be able to use non-DualSense controllers to play PS5 games, the Beloder Bezavier controller I just reviewed on the channel allows you to do that. That review is linked in the description below. Also, for the next few weeks, maybe even months, I'm going to be in this terrible habit of staying staring directly into this camera when I should be looking at you over here. We can switch them on the fly. I don't know which one to be looking at. Eventually, I'm just going to dislocate my ocular cavities and have them wander in the yard. This is confusing for me. It's fantastic as it has magnetic Hall effect sticks that should in essence never get stick drift for me, at least not in my lifespan. That recentering spring may go out, but not while I'm still taking breaths out of these lungs. The adapters or converters, those two words are used interchangeably, that I use with these controllers are both from Brook. They're the XB2 for Xbox and the uh, PS2? No, no, that'd be 
be too dangerously close to stepping on Sony's toes. Uh, this model right here, those are both linked in the description below, right next to the controller we're reviewing today, because you might want to get this for one of the consoles, Xbox and PlayStation, not be limited to Switch. I know I sure as hell don't want to be. As for the ergonomics or comfort, this thing is freakishly comfortable. It has become my daily controller over the last four or five days on both PlayStation and the Xbox side of the house. Pretty ironic considering it's a Switch controller and that's the one platform I'm not really using it for. But this feels identical shape and shell wise to the dimensions of an Xbox One slash series controller, which is a damn good thing because those things are freakishly comfortable for most average size hands. There's no such thing as average size hands, but your hands, my hands, his hands, her hands. So m most people's hands feel, feel good on these controllers. There's no rubber grips like the Apex 3 had, but that's not a complaint of mine whatsoever. This feels pretty good in the hand. And I've got no complaints with the plastics making contact with my hand. I will say the only thing that's going to make this a little more comfortable if you have medium to larger size hands is pop it on some control freaks or thumbstick cap add-ons to add a little bit more height and grip. As for build quality, there is a small manufacturing defect on the plastics on the bottom of the shell here. However, there's no major panel gaps where the front faceplate and rear shell meet. In case you want to do a tear down or disassembly, you are going to have four Phillips head screws. But nothing about how this controller feels in hand or what I could dig up online about a quality control reputation raises an eyebrow, but if you run into any issues, there is one year of coverage with all Fly Digi controllers. As for the D-pad or direction buttons on Fly Digi's controller, they're going with the Mecha Tactile D-pad. Now that's Razer. Different marketing gimmick name popping up on screen here, but it feels very similar to those Razer micro switches that have eight distinct notches or steps, and they're also mechanical switches, which feel very nice. The D-pad does stick further from the front faceplate than I'd like to see, especially since it's not a swappable option, but no complaints here. As for the face or action buttons, I do have a couple of gripes here. And that's mostly with the C and Z button over here, which are a membrane switch. Very nice. And it's just kind of a mind trick. I wish they went all mechanical buttons or all membrane buttons as opposed to mixing and matching here. Also the placement for C and Z, if they could put them, uh, I don't know, perhaps not here where you could accidentally press them with the meat of your thumb. Although in practice, I never accidentally hit them. But the biggest complaint here, if you're using them on Switch, Xbox, PlayStation, any of the consoles, basically anything except PC where you can run the rewazed application to assign these to specific Windows functions, then these are just gonna be bound to a D-pad direction or one of the or action buttons. So they're kind of unnecessary. And if you are going to have two additional buttons in addition to the ones on the rear, I kind of like the implementation of Razer having those two additional bumpers up there versus these C and Z buttons down here. As for the accessory button suite, very similar to my previous Fly Digi controller reviews because they are identical. But if you didn't catch those, I'm going to catch up to speed right now. You have a start and select, which are a weird oval shape, and they're also cocked at an angle. This might look like it's a home button to turn on the console. Absolutely not. It's going to be this tiny one down here. Then you've got these two metal pads. That's to drop into the charger dock. It's $20, not included. And they are using a USB-C port at the top, not micro USB. So that's good. I'm going to go ahead and give the accessory button suite a seven out of 10. Like I said, this has been my daily. No complaints here, except for one big old fat one. And that is if you're using extended thumbstick caps, one on the left over here, which trying to hit select over here, you have to reach up and over at a really weird angle. You don't have that issue here with start, but with select, you, sur you sure as hell do. And I didn't like that. Notice for the thumbsticks, joysticks, analog sticks, front niblets, they're actually pretty good. The rubber's pretty gosh darn grippy as long as you keep it wiped off of any grease or oils from your fingers. Just use your shirt and give them a little wipe down. Now they are removable. There's no swappable accessories for different heights or shapes, but what's cool about them being removable is you can actually pop on control freaks or other thumbstick caps without putting pressure on your thumbstick modules, thus potentially speeding up the problem of stick drift. Although with this controller, that shouldn't matter as much because it's Hall Effect thumbstick modules, which are virtually stick drift proof. There's still a recentering spring, which is one physical component. And that's how these thumbsticks are able to feel like potentiometer thumbsticks that you're used to. They're spring loaded the same to where they have resistance on both the X and Y axis, vertical and horizontal. So there's a recentering spring in there that could wear out and cause stick drift. Much less likely to happen than potentiometer thumbstick modules, which have two additional points of contact, potentiometer sensors, and then these carbon contact patches or stripe plates, whatever they want to call them, that wear down over time. So one point of failure versus three, definitely a lot better for the Hall effect. How do these perform in Gamepad Tester? Over here in Gamepad Tester, this is going to be the most direct and accurate representation of these thumbsticks. I'm going wired for one, and I'm in PC X input mode. This controller does not have support for D input. Probably wouldn't be using that much unless it was an older launcher or game, maybe some retro emulation or something. Pretty good resting value here as I move the left and right analog stick on their vertical and horizontal axis, and then I stop. They snap back to a pretty good resting value. That left stick is wandering the yard just a skosh, but there is absolutely zero in 
in-game drift, and I have the in-game dead zones bumped all the way down to zero. And as for the circularity test, moving them slow and steady in a circle. Yeah, these are honestly on par with potentiometer thumbstick modules. Yes, these are magnetic hall effect joints, but they're not going to be that much more accurate because <laughs> there's, there's a little something for you. Not all magnetic hall effect thumbstick modules are created equal. There's a vast majority of them on the market from different manufacturers, different suppliers coming from different parts of the world. Some of them perform phenomenally under 1% in the circularity test and always snapping back to a perfect resting value and most likely will never get stick drift for you. Then there's kind of janky, shitty Alibaba and AliExpress Hall Effect thumbstick modules that you yourself can buy and try and solder them onto your gamepad. Probably not because the PCBs generally don't communicate with Hall Effect thumbsticks without a little bit of trickery. We'll talk about that in a future video. Generally, you can't grab Hall Effect thumbstick modules, solder them into a stock controller and have them work. These perform pretty damn good, but they're not blowing my tits back. Reason being that these are probably run of the middle, still budget friendly Hall Effect thumbsticks. Yes, they still have that major perk or benefit of being pretty much stick drift proof and something else on the controller will break before you get stick drift. But they're not the most accurate thing in the world as we're seeing over here. This is pretty on par with potentiometer thumbstick modules. And as far as control freak thumbstick cap compatibility, we got some red infernos here for the Switch controller and they are going to be taut as fuck and not want to go on. Then you've got some white galaxies for the PlayStation 4 and 5 platform and they are going to be so tight that I wouldn't even attempt it. Then you're going to have some black omnis over here for the Xbox One and series. They're going to be tight as shit. I'm going to tell you that right now because they're actually two millimeters smaller than the than these two ones. But awkwardly enough, what does fit is the Modern Warfare limited edition joints for PS4. <laughs> Those work on here pretty, pretty good. Although I did have to wedge them on with a good amount of strength. As for the bumpers or triggers, I usually record that right here at my desk, but I kind of forgot to and I'm already so comfortable in the seat, so I'm just going to record it right here. The bumpers have this little stippling very similar to the Xbox Series controller, but a little bit less bumpy, if that makes sense. It's still ribbed for his and her pleasure, but you're not going to get the same grit out of it. <laughs> But these bumpers are some of my favorites I've ever used on any platform of controller. Why? Because you can actuate them here, here, here. It doesn't matter where you press them. You got the same actuation force. 10 out of 10, we bumping people off with these bumpers. And as for these trigs, I'm actually a pretty big fan. You have a very nice, tight mechanical click, very tactile, very clicky. <laughs> Obviously it's clicky. It's a mechanical switch in there when you turn it on. But when you turn it off, you got a pretty good resistance on the analog triggers as well. So if you're trying to modulate that throttle and brake in a racing game, I'm going to give these triggers nine out of 10, repeat nine out of 10. They'd get a perfect score for me if they had a bit more resistance. They're still a little lighter than I like. As for the rear buttons, I'm starting to feel like a little bit of a broken record because this is the third Fly Digi controller I've reviewed back to back to back that has the identical rear buttons. But in case you didn't catch those reviews, I'm going to do two things for you. One is going to be recommending subscribing because you wouldn't have missed those videos. You'd, you'd be all caught up and you'd know what I'm about to say here. But two, I'm just going to jump right in with what is, in my opinion, one of the weakest components of this controller, unfortunately, a little Achilles heel on the back here. Biggest problem right out of the way, right up front is that you need a PC in order to install the Fly Digi application as it is not available on the consoles. There is also a mobile version, but from what I've heard, it doesn't work at all. Or when it does work, recommended not to use it for data collection and privacy reasons. Fly Digi is China's number one controller. I'm not Mr. Paranoid wearing a tinfoil hat over here, waiting for the government to collapse or anything. But if I don't have to install extra applications, extra third-party apps on my phone, then I'm not going to. And the software program for PC seems to be a lot more reputable and trusted from the little dive that I I did. So you know I'm not blowing a bunch of smoke up your patooties. This is the official application in the iOS store. You got 2.8 stars from 55 reviews. And the main comment is pointing out that there is no support after iOS 17.0. And even if it is working, still don't have the desire to want to install this on my phone. Also, another reason I steer clear of phone applications as the software suite for controllers is that you need to Bluetooth your controller to your phone or tablet and then un-Bluetooth it in order to pair back up to your console or PC via cable or the 2.4 gigahertz dongle. So it's the controller's kind of unusual usable when it's paired via Bluetooth to your phone, other than as a mobile gaming controller or to make tweaks inside the software. But you need that application to rebind these rear buttons, which are pretty quiet. I like that. Also, these two are in a good position. Big fan of these. These ones, not so much. You have to reach for them just a little bit. And also they're kind of cocked at an awkward angle because you're not really going to be resting your fingers here, probably more so here. And yes, you can cover all four of them simultaneously, but that just feels stinky. Probably going to hold it like that. And while these aren't terrible, they're just by no means the best rear buttons or back paddles that I've 
tested on the channel, I'm gonna go ahead and give them a six out of 10, which is being generous considering the applications not on console. These two uh, are on the phone, but have terrible reviews and are known to collect data and just don't work that great. And for clarification, everything collects your data, but these are using it in a very not fun way. Activation tool, you don't need this. The model I reviewed last used this application, but the one we're reviewing today uses Space Station, which of course I have pinned down to the taskbar for easy access. Over here in the Fly Digi Space Station application, not the best thing in the world. You can't pinch and resize this. You cannot full screen the application and you have to do everything from the mouse, except for binding. You need to actually grab the controller for that, which is stupid. Here she is. Homepage is going to be a summary of all of the functionality of your controller. Vibration intensity by default is at 50. I crank mine up to 100. This is where you're going to remap the rear buttons as well as C and Z, those extra face buttons, which I think are fucking silly because unless you're using Rewazd on the PC for additional Windows functions, such as swapping through your OBS scenes or something, just going to be two additional buttons that you could probably just reach your happy ass over to the D-pad for. Speaking of dumb, this entire section on the corner, local games, there doesn't need to be per game settings for this controller, and this should be lopped off with the next update or patch for sure. But all the remapping functionality, including all the stock buttons, face buttons, D-pad, all right here. Joystick, you can set up sensitivity curves. Love to see that. Real pro controller shit over here. One thing that everyone should do is bump this dead zone from five all the way down to zero. If you want to be a hero, then hit apply or else nothing happens for you. Motion sensing because everyone gets super wet and super stiff over this feature. Sensitivity, I recommend cranking it up to around 30 or 40. Seems a little bit more peppy. Joystick dead zone compensation, again, 15. I, I'd like it as low as possible while I'm not experiencing drift. Now, in order to activate that motion sensing, that six axis gyro, if you will, you have a button that's going to be dedicated to activate and deactivate that feature. By default, is going to be the left triggers. Uh, yeah, there it is. Distance setting is going to be your minimum and maximum squeeze for the triggers. So think of it like a software trigger stop where you only need to squeeze your five percentile and you're firing your gun on screen. Fantastic. Trigger vibration as you do have secondary motors in the triggs. And then in general, I don't know why they call it general. It's just the lighting over here. Never mind. There's a little vibration over here too, but it's mostly the RGB lighting. This is not in real time as you select these. Nothing is going to happen until you hit save, which kind of sucks meat. I wish you could actually control a radial wheel of RGB colors and see it change on your controller. It's all good in the hood. You're going to have a slew of firmware updates in this cog icon over here. Never mind. There's only one. Uh, oh my goodness. I'm thinking of this application over here where you have four separate updates, one for the dongle, one for the controller, one for the software, and one for your mother's brother's sister's uh, pacemaker. And once you've set up your sick ass profiles in here, you've got Grandpappy Winston, Tomahawk Knuckle Duster 3000. I'm going to slap you silly sideways and across just a couple of names for your profiles. You come down here to function settings and from this little drop down, you're able to select those here to where it's actually going to be flashed to the memory, the onboard storage of this controller to where when you take your happy ass to the living room to play on your console, it's going to be on there as well and not just bound to this software application on the PC. Also, I recommend tapering the default sleep time from 15 minutes to five minutes to put her to sleep and save a little battery life. Let's get out of this application because I've spent enough hot air uh, here. I'm going to get the stock input lagger delay in a little test called X input test. You've got to be in X input mode plugged into the PC and we sure as shit are. We don't have to be plugged in. We are going to test Bluetooth as well as that wireless dongle, but it's looking like wired 11 milliseconds on under a 100 hertz polling rate. Oh boy, I don't know about that. Let's run it a couple more times. Better results that time getting around four milliseconds on a 250 hertz stock clock. However, insanely inconsistent with the minimum at 0.7 and the maximum at 2500. Very far from each other. Jitter isn't that high though, so that is good. I'm going to run a couple more. This time it's at five. These tests are all over the road and I'm staying consistent on those thumbsticks. But if you scroll through the numbers here, you're seeing they're bouncing all over the place. Not very consistent, but here's your speeds. Let's test the dongle. We are connected wireless to the PC via that dongle. In order to make that happen with that toggle, select the dongle logo all the way to the right. Then you're going to hold down this home button, this tiny little home button for about 30 seconds to turn it on. Okay, the test is already performing itself without me doing anything. You might think stick drift, but I would say no. There is literally no speed difference whatsoever by going with the wireless dongle route versus going wired with a USB-C cable. Very interesting. In fact, I would say it is actually a little bit more consistent via that dongle. Jitter is higher, but the minimum and maximum a little bit closer. Still getting around four milliseconds on a 250 hertz stock clock. So identical speeds, whether you want to go wired or wireless, it's really going to come down to consistency and saving battery life for you. Actually, not even consistency. So it's going to come down to uh, battery life for you. Speaking of battery life, it's actually really good. As for the battery life, this guy over here in Reddit, 
says about eight hours or so. Well, Amazon's gonna tell you a little over 40 hours. Big difference from that eight over there on Reddit, buckaroo. Charging time, one to two hours. What does the manufacturer say about it? I don't know what kind of paint they're huffing over here on Reddit, but it ain't eight hours. I can tell you that right now because I've gamed for probably 20 plus hours on this controller and have yet to kill the battery on it. So it's probably closer to the manufacturer's advertised 40 hours. They go on to say, since these are Hall Effect joysticks, it's understandable that the battery life would be short. Hall Effect thumbsticks don't drain the battery life any quicker than potentiometer thumbsticks. Go into Reddit for controller information. That is fun. Fun in the sun. And shortly after my last review where I pointed out that instead of saying wireless and Bluetooth wireless, it should just say wireless and Bluetooth connection, it has now been reworded to clarify a little bit more, mo better, that you have a wireless connection via the dongle, the Bluetooth connection, and then a wired connection. And if you're confused about the different models in the Fly Digi lineup, the best resource hands down to clear up that confusion is going to be on the Amazon landing page, awkwardly enough, not even on the manufacturer's website or anything, but they have this chart here. The left side is going to be fixed, but on the right side, you can switch between different models in the lineup that they currently offer. Now with the flagship and most expensive Apex 3, which I recently reviewed, it's supremely stupid because it has a Bluetooth card on the controller. You got a Bluetooth card inside your laptop or desktop, but you can't use Bluetooth to connect to your PC. That Bluetooth connection is only for Switch. Kind of dumb, right? So anyway, on the back over here, we're going to switch this toggle to the center, which is going to be the Bluetooth logo. And awkwardly enough, all three of these options on this toggle supply battery power. So none of these are like an off switch. But now that I have the dip switch in the middle to Bluetooth, I'm going to hold down the home button for around five seconds until this LED begins to flash rapidly. Then you may have a Bluetooth logo down here in your tool satchel. I did not. I removed it because it was kind of heavy. Just stroke the Windows key on your keyboard and type in Bluetooth. There it is right there. Add a device. Bluetooth. Okay, it's not even on. The controller turned itself off, so be cognizant of that, that if you're not fast, if you're not lickety split, it will turn itself off. Come on, pair. You're making me look stupid in front of my internet comrades. Xbox wireless controller. We are connecting. Something good is happening happening. God, I'm losing patience. Nope. Oh, that's frustrating. Oh, there we go. Oh, man. I don't even know if the manufacturer wanted that to be a thing, but it, I'm connected via Bluetooth. Supremely whack. So despite the fact that it was showing I connected via Bluetooth, it's not recognized an X input test or Steam, any launchers. I can't do anything with it via Bluetooth. You still can go wireless with that dongle, but if you are trying to go wireless on PC, Bluetooth is not the method that you're going to be taking. At least I couldn't figure it out. You might be a lot smarter than me, and I wouldn't be surprised. Also, it does say in the instruction manual that Bluetooth doesn't work on PC. It's just for the switch. Over here in the Lord of Mice overclocking software, going wired to start in this drop down, select all. You are going to see your controller listed as an Xbox 360 controller for Windows, not overclocked on the stock clock for God knows what speed. Let's fix it right now. Radical. Unplug it, replug it, and she is now overclocked. Let's measure the results in X input test, shall we? No difference on the first poll. Run a couple more. Mm. Oh, hello. Okay. This is, that is lower. That is higher. This is closer. That's all, that's all good things. Let's run it again. So I've had a couple of fluke numbers thrown in there that do appear as if overclocking's done a hell of a good job for us three milliseconds of input lag or delay, and it is more consistent. But I don't really think this is because of the overclock. I think I'm just going a little faster on the thumbsticks. I think these are actually pretty similar to what we were getting pre-overclock. Pretty accurate test. We only have one outlier, which is that huge number at the top. I'm going to deem this controller polling rate locked, but I would still advise overclocking just like on Xbox controllers. They're polling rate locked, but I do recommend overclocking them if you're on PC because it gives you a more consistent connection. Well, that, 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 that's, 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 that's the main thing right there, so it makes it more consistent. This is it's actually lowering the speeds though, so maybe it isn't polling rate locked. You know what? Let's run one more. See, but now it's right up there uh, around the same realm we were at pre overclock. Interestingly enough, it's communicating with the Lord of My Software the same with the dongle. It is showing that we are already overclocked at that thousand hertz polling rate, but let's test it wirelessly via that dongle. Same stats we're seeing going wired. Love to see that. So it does seem as if it is polling rate locked, but again, I recommend overclocking as it did tighten things up a bit. So as for the pros, cons, and verdict, I'm going to start with the cons. First of all, the rear buttons, I'm going to list them in the cons department just because I think that is one of the weaker components of this gamepad and it would be much higher on my list and much more of a solid recommend if it had a better rear button suite. Also, the thumbstick caps are removable but not swappable. There's no options for different heights or shapes and that's pretty much a pro controller expected feature that you're going to have remappable rear buttons, swappable thumbsticks, and then some kind of a trigger lock or stop system or digital mechanical triggers. I know we're pretty bougie in 2023 what we expect from pro controllers.
controllers, but also these companies are expecting like hundreds of dollars from us for these pro controllers. Not so much with this bad boy, $90 on Amazon right now, or $45 and your soul and dignity if you want to get it from AliExpress or Wish or Teemu. I'm not going to list the C and Z buttons as cons because additional buttons I think is a good thing, especially if you're on the PC because you can run Rewaz to do Windows settings such as turning the volume up and down or switching scenes in OBS or muting Discord or God knows whatever you want to do. Run your stream off these two buttons, but it is a nasty little mind trick that these are mechanical face or action buttons and then the CZ buttons flatter and a little bit smaller, a different plastic and membrane, not mechanical. So there's like different types of buttons completely. Last con is this little plastic piece up here. Not only does it look really cheap, but it's also a massive tease because you think this is going to be the home button, turn the controller on and off, but it's actually down here. And this whole thing just looks and feels really cheap. Also, the RGB lighting isn't really implemented in a very cool way, in my opinion. It's just this little strip up here and it's pretty bright. Even when you do dim it, it's a little bit too bright for my liking. I ended up just turning it off, uh, but it's a cool feature to have. RGB is always good to have the option. As for the pros and verdicts, that's all going to get wrapped into one. I do think this offers a tremendous value at $90. Now that is pretty expensive for a Switch controller for sure, because you can get a solid Pro controller for between $45 and $70. I've reviewed quite a few models in that price point as that is the most common price bracket for controllers on the Switch. Xbox and PlayStation, absolutely freaking lootly not. They go all the way up to like $400, literally the price of a console. Some of them are behind me. It's... <laughs> Jesus. In all honesty, if some of them weren't sent for review, it would have been a hard press for me to spec them out in the builder and whip out my wallet. And I probably still would have because I have a problem with spending money. My problem is your enjoyment because I can review all these things and then you don't have to waste your money on all this shit. Just the good stuff that I give you the go ahead, the stamp of approval on, but all the crap that I just throw on the ground. Oh, I would never do that. That's the stuff we pass on. Let's wait for Danny to drive by in his lifted Tacoma. Sounds good. Got the glass plaques on there for the, the Flowmasters series series 50s. If you're picking this up for Nintendo Switch, I would say to look elsewhere because the controller I reviewed a couple months ago for $45 is a beast and does pretty much the same shit for that console. It's got the motion sensing. I think it even had Amiibo support. This does not have Amiibo, by the way, which sucks for a $90 controller. But other than that, it can wake up the Nintendo Switch console. You do have the motion sense aiming, although it was a little bit not the best on the Switch. It worked great on PC, but on the Switch, it didn't feel as smooth as the licensed Switch Pro controller. Controller. So a little pricey for what I'd like to see on the Switch, but as an all-around controller, a multi-platform controller, I've been using this on PS5, Xbox Series, PC. I'm not a mobile gamer, but if I was, I could use this on iOS or Android, phones and tablets. Basically, one controller to play on all your devices. Yes, PlayStation and Xbox, you're going to need adapters, which are linked in the description below. But to have a controller with magnetic Hall Effect thumbsticks and these nice mechanical face buttons, nice triggers, and these two rear buttons are actually really solid. The ones that you're pretty much going to be covering the majority of the time you're playing are really good and you can use these two by stretching out your fingers it's just not the best but for $90 it would be simply silly for me not to recommend this controller as I think it offers a whole hell of a lot of features the fly digi Darth Vader 3 professional edition is linked in the description below alongside the adapters to make it work on consoles that you're probably gonna make better use of a good controller with sorry switch but the game's already baked in with big dead zones so even if you have a controller with tight dead zones it doesn't matter and most of the games on switch are like cute little family platformers like things like Mario Party and Mario Kart. Do you need some esports athlete back button beastly rig plastic princess GameSpot esport premium pro controller and now I'm just saying random words at you for an underpowered Tegra SOC switch sweating playing games at 720p? Probably not. Yeah for PC and every other platform. Hell yes, brother or sister. This is linked in the description below. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms platforms and socials in the description below. To get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of Gamer Heaven, join the community discord and check me out at twitch.tv where I go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my pH balance is on point. Just kidding. Starting June, I'm going to be live streaming a lot. Thanks for watching. This has been AK40 Kevin hosting Gamer Heaven and I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily all the time, 60% of the time, sometimes, most of the time. Peace.